Yeah, all right. Let's begin again. Quiet in the restaurant, please. Quiet in the restaurant. Thank you. Welcome to meeting number 3,758 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. If you're attending by Zoom, please put an X on your microphone. Uh, all right. Beginning on March next week, March 23rd, Justin Tucker will be returning again. He's been collecting political illustrations, memes, off social media. So he's got a whole stash of these, he claims again. And they were pretty good last time. March the 23rd. March the 30th then, uh, Mr. Tobin of a local activist organization will be talking about the very important issue of long-term care for the disabled and elderly. Very important program, March 30th. Transitioning into our Earth Month series of speakers, April the 6th, Andy Anderson will be talking about things each of us can do to help stop climate change. Stopping climate change, what you can do. April the 13th, a candidate for the U.S. Congress representing the Xenials of Illinois from Downstate Illinois District, Champaign-Urbana, will be here to tell us about her campaign for change, saving the United States. April the 20th, the Illinois Green Party, of which I am affiliated, will be talking about their upcoming agenda for this election year. On April the 22nd, 27th, we will have Enrique Perez, celebrated speaker at our events annually in the park. Uh, we'll be talking about why nobody should vote for Joe Biden. Don't vote for Joe, he says. Vote for anybody, but not Joe. May the 4th is presently open. Our May Day speaker on organized labor. We're Still have not filled that slot yet. On May the 11th, uh, D. Knight, activist from, uh, 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 will be talking about his book. He claims he's got a path to peace, how to achieve peace in the world uh, and in war. May the 11th. May 18th, uh, we've got two speakers, two experts. We're going to be talking about nuclear energy. Nuclear nuke juice traveling by railroads uh, around the United States and other hazards. Uh, so don't, and uh, all about nuclear energy. On May the 25th, uh, we've got Andy and, and Tim are putting together a program. Uh, the Republican Party is planning to steal the election by collecting votes. How to steal an election. That leaves open five dates in June. If you'd like to speak, please give me a, send me an email or give me a call with a title and a description of your presentation. Okay, Tim, take it away. Tonight, during the rebuttal period, I'm not going to give a rebuttal on uh, today's program. I'm going to use the rebuttal time to give a one-minute book report on each of five books. And I'll give you the titles, so those of you that don't hang around can look these up on the internet. The first one is called Canary in a COVID world. The next one is called Fauci's first fraud. The third one is called the rise of the fourth Reich. The fourth one is called the real Anthony Fauci. Okay. And the fifth one is called beyond debate. For those of you that think there's no global warming, I would suggest you order this book because the evidence is overwhelming. And a lot of these suggestions that I'm going to make on April 6th about what people can do to help save the environment are in this book, Beyond Debate, yeah. Answers to 50 Misconceptions on hey, Climate Change. Put it on the table. The that one you. is Shahir Masi, but the title is Beyond Debate. Thank you. and. Look Thank forward you. to the uh, rebuttal tonight where I'll give you a full uh, book report and what these books have to say about what's going on in the world. Can, you, can you put the titles of the books onto the chat? 
We yeah, we will. He'll I'll, 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 I'll do that. Yeah. Just hand him over here. I'll put him on the chat. Jake, did you have an announcement? Your hands up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I I just had a question. Why do you need to copyright the college of complexes? That that we'll we'll talk. I'll address that later. Okay. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. All right, Justin, go ahead. Are you going to put the uh, PowerPoint up? Yeah, I will. Just get started and I'll get the PowerPoint up. I'm just going to hold the mic. I don't think hey, I need hey, the uh, podium, especially if you can't see. Well, well they can see you. They, they get cameras on now. Okay. All right. Well, so welcome to, little, uh, welcome to the College of Complexes. Um, Tim wanted me to remind everybody of the format before we started. Uh, one full at a time, no personal attacks. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, we'll have, we just did our announcements, but now we're going to the presentation. We'll have up to an hour. I don't know if we'll use up the entire hour. After that, we'll have Q&A. Then we'll have rebuttals uh, up to a few minutes to rebut the libertarians or to just talk about whatever you want. And then a final rebuttal by the Libertarians to close out the evening. So, Tim, are we good with the I got to re I, since I had to reboot, I got to pull it up again. So just keep talking about it a little bit. Okay. So I just want to thank every, all the Libertarians who came tonight. Um, and I want to thank everybody who is not a Libertarian who came tonight. There's nobody that came here that I can tell who... Uh, I forgot to talk about, I forget to make the tuition, but since we're all speaking, we don't have to try to pay it. But I don't think anybody's came who didn't aware there's going to be tuition. So Just I would cover tuition if you were not aware that you had to pay tuition here. There is something interesting though. There's a free rider problem at the College of Complexes because all the people who join by Zoom do not, uh, uh, they do not um, uh, pay, they don't pay tuition. So uh, we got Comrade Charlie, who again I support. What does this have to do with the campaign for election? I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm killing time. You got to uh, talk uh, about the campaign. My PowerPoint. Talk about libertarians, if you don't mind. Libertarian, right? Oh, damn it. <laughs> it's 2024. Yeah, I know. I'm Tell us about the Libertarian Party. Moderated is a good way to narrow it down. I think this is it. Here. Well, everything looks fine. Why don't we go? He's got a PowerPoint he wants to do, and uh, we're trying to get it up. Oh, I see. That's what's happening. It's just he emailed me something. So nice. Tim had to reboot his computer, so he didn't have the PowerPoint up. If one of those generous donors who's joining us online wants to make up, I said, or, "Will you talk about libertarians?" I will when I can see the PowerPoint. It's I mean, I, I bought a PowerPoint so I can have my speech there and I can just kind of look at the notes. Uh, so, uh, if, if Comrade Paydock, if it's okay, to hey, don't don't worry about speech. us. Don't worry about us paying. We're here to just yeah, pay attention. Are you? <laughs> Why does that concern you? Like I said, we pay attention. Right, we get full screen. That's uh, what we're doing. We're up right now. Thanks for your patience, guys, especially Charlie. All right. So thank you, guys. Uh, again, one full at a time. Except for the waitress. <laughs> well, it's okay. All right. So thanks for joining. I want to let you guys know we got a few events coming up. We're going to be at the parade tomorrow, Northwest Side Irish. So we're going to meet at Onaham School in the what, what order? 54. So join us in, in, at 54 at Onaham School tomorrow. We're also having our Chicago April meeting, April 2nd at the Piggery. 
And then uh, for the Central Committee, April 17th is going to be the date that's mandated by law. We will figure out a location at a later time. So put those on your calendar if you're a libertarian. All right, Tim, let's... So what is the Libertarian Party? The Libertarian Party is your representative in American politics. It is the only political organization which represents you as a unique and responsible individual. Our slogan is that we are the party of principle because we stand firmly on principles. Libertarians strongly oppose any government interference into the personal family and personal decisions. Essentially, we believe all Americans should be free to live their lives and pursue their interests as they see fit. They do not harm one another. Founded in 1971, we run many hundreds of candidates every election cycle. These candidates seek positions ranging from city council to president of the United States. Each of these candidates helps give liberty of voice. Some of those candidate, uh, candidates and uh, elected officials are in the room tonight, so we will learn more. Move on, Tim. We, the members of the Libertarian Party, challenge the cult of the omnipotent state and defend the rights of the individual. We hold that all individuals have the right to exercise sole dominion over their own lives and have the right to live whatever manner they choose as long as they do not forcibly interfere with the equal rights of others to live whatever manner they choose. Governments throughout history have regularly operated on the opposite principle, that the state has the right to dispose of the lives of individuals and the fruits of their labor. Even within the United States, all political parties, other than our own, grant to government the right to regulate the lives of individuals and seize the fruits of their labor without their consent. Let's move on, Tim. We, on the contrary, deny the right of any government to do these things and hold that where governments exist, they must not violate the rights of any individual, namely one, the right to life. Accordingly, we support the prohibition of the initiation of physical force against others. Two, the right to liberty of speech and action. Accordingly, we oppose all attempts by government to abridge the freedom of speech and press, as well as government censorship in any form. And three, the right to property. Accordingly, we oppose all government interference with private property, such as confiscation, nationalization, eminent domain, and support and support the prohibition of robbery, trespass, fraud, and misrepresentation. Next. Since governments, when instituted, must not violate individual rights, we oppose all interference by government in the areas of voluntary and contractual relations among individuals. People should not be forced to sacrifice their lives and property for the benefit of others. They should be uh, left free to govern to, by government to deal with one another as free trade traders. And the resulting economic system, the only one compatible with the protection of individual rights, is the free market. All right. So in the last election cycle, here's how we did. Uh, Bill Redpath ran for Senate. He got roughly just under 2% of the vote. Scott Schluter and John Phillips got close to 3%. Dan Robin statewide got two, just over 2%, but he got 5.9% in Montgomery County. John Stewart, 2.13% uh, as Secretary of State. Uh, Professor McCloskey, uh, just under 2% as Comptroller. And Preston Nelson, 2.23% as Treasurer. Um, so that's how we did. We did not get ballot, ac uh, ballot access. Countywide or statewide for any of those races, unfortunately. I think part of the reason why is because those are not uh, election years. So, or I should say presidential election years. I feel like uh, well, we'll see. Well, you know, we'll we'll see how we do this year. But I think that there's a lot more interest going into presidential election cycles. We'll see how the we'll, we'll see how libertarians do. Um, Next. <clears throat> So here's some libertarian office holders in Illinois. Um, there are a lot of them were elected in 2001 or uh, excuse, 2021 or 2023. Bernie Anderson, he uh, River Valley Library District. Justin Gershner, he's a Hamill Village president. Chris Laurent in the room tonight, first elected libertarian in the city of Chicago uh, for Chicago Police District Council, 14th District. 
Uh, Patrick Leopis, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Poplar Creek Library Board, Kelly Liebman, Greenwood Township Trustee, Aisha Pickett, Harvey City Treasurer, that's a big one. She was reelected. She's been, uh, at least her picture has been in reason. Um, so it, that's a very awesome uh, win for us. Jonathan Russell is uh, in the Harrisburg Board of Education, and Brandon Weisenberg was reelected Peoria Heights Village Trustee. So nice. congratulations to our office. Next. Yeah, I'm going to answer for um, so, uh, actually, let, let's go back, uh, Tim, sorry. But while, while Tim's going back, we do, as I mentioned, we do have Chris Laurent in the room tonight. Um, so I want to give Chris Laurent a few minutes here to speak, uh, about his experience in the, uh, Chicago, uh, Police District Council. Um, and then after that, we'll hear from our ward committee people. So, okay, you're done with the PowerPoint, right? For now, yes. Just, just, just see that in the hole in the middle there. Just set it there. Sounds good. Can you hear me okay, Dr. Yeah, right. I think. Can everybody hear me? Put it on the podium, please. The way it's supposed to be. Just give me a minute. What do you say, Tim? All right. Uh, okay, we're, we're doing okay with uh, with the audio now. Yes. I don't want to have feedback or anything like that. First and foremost, I want to thank the college complexes for entertaining uh, the, the Libertarian Party. I uh, include myself and my colleagues that are here. Uh, thank you, uh, Tim and Charlie, and uh, thank you, Justin, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, as you mentioned, Justin, that is, uh, I am uh, Chris Laurent. I am uh, currently the uh, 14th Police District Council member, uh, and I also serve as the chair on that council. Um, yeah, it's uh, as far as running for office, it's, uh, it's been challenging. It was challenging to a degree. Uh, it was a nonpartisan election. I think that was part of our success, but I think people liked our ideas as well. Uh, the thing I'd like to underscore that Justin had mentioned during his presentation was that uh, he never used leader as far as uh, he describes candidates uh, because we don't elect leaders we elect representatives people like are going to go out and represent you and government now if, if those of you that remember me coming in here and, and doing my campaign speech here at the college of complexes about a year and some change ago i defined it and i still define this position that i hold as such this is another layer of government that is not the pure definition of government glut. So logically, you might ask, why am I sitting on that, on that, you know, why am I occupying that space? Well, I think just about any libertarian would agree with me that uh, we, we work towards obsolete uh, as far as working in government. The, the biggest, the brightest day we can see forward is to where government dissipates and disappears from our, our, our daily lives. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and give it back to Justin. Thank you so much. Hey, one more time. time, no personal attacks. Yeah, that was a double, double. Yeah, we need to talk to those guys. Not quite the track. No, no, I, I let Daniel into, uh, but where did this, this go? Thank 
I got, I'm uh, sharing the uh, the thing. We have a Q and A session at the end that we can. Uh, I know. That we got so. All right, so. So thanks, Chris, for for uh, the uh, one full at a time, please, 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 please. Thank you. Um, so thank you, Chris, for for your little uh, talk there. Um, I want to. So we are established in Cook County, meaning we got more than five percent in the last election, as you saw up there. Nico Satsoulis, uh got was in a two-way race with. Um, uh, with Fritz Kiegi, and you got again 17 percent. So, because of that, we are established in Cook County. Well, we found out the hard way that we weren't going to have a primary this year. The reason why we didn't have a primary this year is because two years ago, when we had our first primary election, somebody had run a write in candidate for uh sheriff, I suppose, and because of that, the the, uh, the Cook County was forced to print all these ballots so one or two people could write a man's name in. Uh, when we, we we assumed we were going to have a primary because uh, we did not know at the time that person had a write in. So we don't have it this time. So in two, I want to announce my write in candidacy for Cook County Board for 2026. Um, so we can have a primary in 2026. Um, so, but we are, there is an exception that we are gonna have primaries for ward committee person, and that's gonna be four wards in, in the city of Chicago. In 2022, 20, uh, we elected our first uh, township committee people in suburban county. This is the first year we're electing our ward committee person in the city of Chicago, and that's where we'll have our primary, that's, these are the candidates that you'll be able to vote for uh, in, uh, in, on Tuesday. So if they want to come up, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, if you guys want to come up, we can go through this. We'll continue on. Um, but I will be also, I'll be first ward committee person. Um, so if you live in the first ward, please consider voting, uh, pulling a libertarian ballot voting for me. I want to continue to organize in the first ward uh, and I want to continue to assist uh, the Libertarian Party with uh, putting up door hangers and doing other sorts of you know organizing and meeting inside my ward uh, to build up uh, support for our candidates when we when you know we have to go vote for them in November. So please offer me if you live in the first ward full libertarian ballot vote for me. Also vote no on Bring Chicago Home because we have enough tax taxes here in Chicago. Um, uh, next, uh, we got Nico Satsoulis in the fifth ward. Again, he was our state's attorney candidate uh, in uh, 2022. And now he is running for his ward committee uh, person spot. So Let's uh, let's let's hear from Nico. Hi everybody, thanks for inviting me. Um, let him speak. We'll get it after. Okay. So there are 50 wards in the city of Chicago. Uh, four of those wards have a libertarian running. That means the residents of these four wards have a third vote in this primary election. That's what I tell everybody and everybody gets excited. They have a third choice. Fifth ward is Hyde Park, South Shore. If you know anybody in Hyde Park, South Shore, let them know they have another choice besides the binary choice that's available now. 75% of Americans are saying that they don't like the choice they're being offered. So these four Chicago wards have a third choice. 
I think this event is a culmination of our efforts all these years, people that have been in the Libertarian Party long before me. And on March 19th is a day to celebrate for Libertarians because we're going to have the first uh, Chicago committee persons ever, is my understanding. So that's the day to celebrate, I think, March 19th. Let everybody know that it's a day for a Libertarian celebration. Um, I don't have anything else to say. You just that's well, about it. Just the... spread the message. And uh, I'm introducing Jim Hume, who happens to be also our Chicago chapter president. My great honor. Thanks, Nico. Jim Hume, James Hume is my name. will appear on the ballot. I'm running uh, for 36 ward committeeman. Um, to answer the question, what does a ward committeeman do? The ward committeeman is a is the party representative in the specific ward in the city of Chicago. Our job is to identify, rally, and communicate with other libertarians in the ward, um, and especially when it comes to election season, to uh, do things such as uh, petition, gather signatures, and make sure that our campaign literature gets into the, the hands of the voters in our ward. Um, as Nico said, this will be the, the, because we are an established party, this will be the first time that libertarians um, have an opportunity to be elected as ward committee people in these four wards. Um, so if you live in one of these four wards, you can walk into uh, to the, the voting booth and request a libertarian ballot. Uh, you can also walk into a polling place and request a nonpartisan ballot and only vote on the Propositions that are that are being presented, which includes the terrible, terrible referendum, bring Chicago home, which is nothing but a backdoor deal to line the pockets of an unelected oligarchy, the Chicago Teachers Union. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Danny. I guess I should be like this far, right? You know, you can hear you. Just go ahead and speak normal. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm Danny Lewis. I am running for the 38th Ward uh, Libertarian Committee person. Um. Yeah. I I hope to uh, get elected to represent my ward for the Libertarians and be one of the first ever committee persons in Chicago elected as a Libertarian as well. Um. If you vote for me, all of your wildest dreams will come true. Justin, come back up. All right, thanks, Danny. Your PowerPoint's down right now, Justin. Do you need it back up? Please. <laughs> all right, just go ahead and start talking. I'll get it back up when we're ready. Start talking, Justin. So, um, so, so we're gonna have the primary, and only those four wards. If you're in those four wards. Please vote for one of our candidates. Pull a libertarian ballot. If they say they don't have one, call BS, and then call the board of elections uh, or the clerk's office. Um, and if you're just going to do, even even if you don't want to do a partisan ballot and you just want to do the referendum, and they tell you, oh, they don't have any, also BS, and call the uh, clerk's office. Coming right. back up now. We'll share screen and it'll come back up in a second here. Any minute. And I hope one of those uh, people who are joining us on Zoom who are very generous with their money should <clears throat> should compensate. You know, there's lots of tuition, back tuition. Get to the laptop. All right. Um, one foot at a time, Charlie. What slide? I don't know, man. Why don't you drop this nonsense? It's uh, Charlie, one fool, sir. That's where we were at before. I'll share it. Okay, you're up. Hang on, not yet. Okay, go ahead. All right. So, 
Uh, we can move on to the next slide. All right, so in the general election, uh, we'll also have some candidates. We're going to hope for a president and vice presidential candidate. We don't know who those uh, candidates are because we haven't picked the nominees yet. We'll do that at our uh, 2024 Libertarian National Committee, uh, excuse me, convention. That's going to happen over Memorial Day weekend in Washington, D.C. So that'd be, join us if you want to uh, witness that. Um, we'll also need help getting the, the, uh, the president and vice presidential slate on the ballot. So um, please sign a petition. We start circulating here. Uh, I should have put that on the you know, upcoming dates. I forgot to add that up there. But the last Tuesday of this month, whatever date that is, is when we start circulating. We'll have till the end of June. So in that time, please consider circ uh, circulating a petition, signing a petition, and uh, or doing what you can to help us with ballot access. Um, we're going to have a Cook County State's Attorney candidate, Andrew Charles Capinci. I, I thought he was going to be on this call, but it seems like to uh, to be recovering from his cataract surgery. So let's keep Andrew uh, in your prayers. Uh, we're going to have uh, also a Clerk of the Circuit Court candidate, Michael Murphy. Um, Tim, would you mind clicking on Michael Murphy? It's going to take a while to pull up. All right. Well, can you see that? So if you want to learn more about Michael Murphy, you can go to go-murphy.com and uh, learn more about Michael Murphy. Uh, and I got to get it up. But I should, I should mention a couple things first. Andrew Kapinski, who is our state security candidate, he's a lawyer. He's been a lawyer for a while. He uh, lives in Norridge. He's very, very passionate about running for state's attorney, so much so that he's going back to uh, class to study up on criminal justice. So, um, so he's got a very passionate thirst for justice, um, and he's he certainly wants uh, you know fairness and all sorts of great, awesome things. Um, as as state's attorney, um, and Murphy, though he's not, he has no clerk at the circuit court experience. He's an outsider, so we can have a guy that can be on the outside looking in, uh, maybe recommend where we can make cuts to the office or abolish it completely, maybe. Um, if he wants to go down that road, that's just my sort of wishful, you know, what's his policy? Um, Cook County Board of Commissioners, James Romay. And then also, uh, we've got Cook County uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, there's a vacancy, actually. So this seat used to belong to um, the current mayor, who is Brandon Johnson. So Brandon Johnson was a union dude, CTA employee. Who got elected? Not even can't even complete its, uh, his first uh, term as any elected office, and now he's mayor. And as as you're seeing, um, he's very ineffective. So um, that leaves up a vacancy, and uh, one of those people running for the vacancy is Jim Cume. Uh Jim already spoke earlier. Jim, you want to talk about the board race specifically, or? Yeah, come on up. Let's let's hear from Jim about the uh, the board race. We also have his website. Uh, we can. Do you want to scroll through his website too? As soon as we, uh, I'm gonna let him talk first. All right, great. Thank you. Um, yes, as Justin mentioned, there is a vacancy on the Cook County Board in the first district. The first district runs from the uh, west side of Chicago, Ukrainian village where I live, through Austin, Oak Park, and then some of the west suburbs such as uh, Maywood, Bellwood. Um, Brandon Johnson was the commissioner, and because of his election to mayor, that is now a vacancy that will be open, and there's a special election of which I will be running. Um, when I talk to people in the district, especially in, in, in the Austin neighborhood, the first thing they talk about is taxes and how high their taxes are. The fact that there is a tax levied on 
items that people need to survive, food, clothing, fuel, is immoral. Those need to be eliminated yesterday. Property taxes, too high. This, this Bring Chicago Home is uh, a referendum is only going to increase rents and increase taxes, drive businesses away, and reduce the number of available jobs for the residents and the voters of the first district. My, 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 uh, my goal is to reduce taxes, reduce spending, and cut the size of the county board down. A lot of resources can be handled and services handled by individual communities and towns. And that should be the focus of where those dollars are spent. That's what we all have to say right now. I think, uh, any questions I can answer them later. Thank you. Justin, you want to go back up? Yes, I'm on my way, Tim. <clears throat> All right. Um, so thanks, Jim. Uh, again, one foot at a time if we can. I know we're taking orders and stuff, but uh, it's a little distracting. Uh, Tim, you don't have to pull this back up. Uh, I think I'm wrapping up here. Uh, but I want to just remind everybody uh, to learn more about the Libertarian Party of Illinois. You visit lpillinois.org if you want to run for office. In Cook County, you can talk to Jim because he's uh, the yeah, political director. Anybody, uh, so if you want to for us, he can help you. You can also, uh, oh man, all these. There's a reason why one at a time is thing because uh, it's real distracting. We're talking. <laughs> um, anywho, uh, lpillinois.org, um, lpchicago.org. Um, tinyurl.com um, I forget because Tim distracted me. I apologize uh, for uh, talking loud into this microphone, but just deal with it. Sorry. And that's all I got. I guess that's Q&A time. Well, you stay up there. My first question is, Justin, why should we all vote Libertarian? You should vote Libertarian because voting for Democrats and Republicans has done nothing but increase the size and tyranny of the United States, the city of Chicago, state of Illinois governments. We need something new. We need to stick it to the man. So vote Libertarian, please. Um, Next question. Okay, hang on. Uh, got a question we're going to have. We're going to. Ellen, what's up? Loud, Ellen. Very loud. Loud, Ellen. Tim, she can. It's fine. Is that your question? All right, so to answer your question, thank you for asking. Repeat it, please. The question was, why do we, rep why do we elect uh, ward committee people? And it's certainly, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unnecessary merger of party and state. The parties are private organizations. Um, we are playing by the rules, uh, but it's, it's just to maintain I don't know. It's just it's 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 a, it's a Democrat machine thing, basically. It's it makes no sense. Uh, parties are can operate in their own way. They can organize their own way. Um, but while it exists, hey, I'll I'll run for it. Okay. I will advocate the ward committee man abolition as the ward committee person. <laughs> Uh, Charlie, go ahead. You got a question? If it's Charlie, then we'll do uh, my friend over here, uh, okay. Mr. Zucker. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, from the impression I get, the Libertarian Party and its candidates think this real estate transfer tax is something brand new, but it's been around since at least 2008 
when it was applied to supply funding for public transit. It's not a new piece of legislation. All it is is they're changing how it's, it's rate. So where do you get the idea that we don't need this now? I heard and stuff like that. It's not brand new at all. What's your question, Shirley? Why do you keep saying that it's a brand new tax? It's been Why a long it's a bad tax? Years. Why is it a brand new tax? I don't think anybody's said it's brand new. Your law. You know so that what it does is it lowers, it lowers the tax for a certain level and then raises it over to another level. All they're doing is changing the rate. Um, you should have, uh, the, the, uh, I mean, it's just going to make, we have a housing crisis here in Chicago. It, it takes, we have to jump through all these hoops, zoning meetings, deals with aldermen, you know, just to build. And this is just going to make it even harder, more hard to, to deal with property, and, and it's going to make it more expensive. We do not, it's not even going to do what it does. Hey, I, I heard my own alderman say that this is going to end uh, homelessness, and that's bullshit. Like, it's not going to end homelessness. Uh, Jim, I think, summed it up uh, earlier quite accurately. It's just, it's just the scheme by, by the teachers' union uh, to, to, I don't know why. I mean, follow up. None of it lowers the taxes. Where is I it? believe. What does it have to do with the teachers union? Money doesn't go to school. Yeah, yeah, Jim, Jim, uh, and, and all, all my libertarian friends are more than welcome to hop in on the answer. Yes, I, know I, don't, I don't have to be the only one hopping in on the answer. So. You don't know what you're talking uh, we know, about. We know now that uh, from some leaked documents that the, the teach, Chicago Teachers Union contract with the city is coming up at the end of the year. One of the provisions they want in their new contract is housing assistance for teachers. They want that written into their new contract. The Chicago te teachers in Chicago have a median income of $93,000 a year. You're going to stand there and tell me you want housing assistance for people making $93,000 a year? It's insane. The teachers union has backed this bill. They are lobbying. They've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get this passed, and it's nothing but a ploy to line their pockets. You call it a mansion tax? There are not enough single-family homes worth over a million dollars in the city of Chicago if you sold them all in one year. If you sold every home in one year, you would not generate the revenue they're talking about. The only way that you can generate any kind of revenue of this falls on commercial property. They're going after commercial buildings and the, and the transfer tax on commercial property. Commercial property is already suffering in the city of Chicago. You want, we want to attract businesses to the city. We want companies coming in, buying properties, employing our, our constituencies, not driving them away. Why am I going to buy a, Why am I, as a, as a, as a corporation, going to invest in Chicago, buy property in Chicago? When I can go to Austin, Texas, when I can go to Nashville, Tennessee, where the transfer tax is fractions of what they're proposing here in the city. This will do nothing but line the pockets of the Chicago Teachers Union and drive business interest out of the city of Chicago. Okay, David Zucker, were you next? Uh, can I, I mean, uh, <clears throat> Never mind. Is that a new oh, uh, 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 Chris wants to give an answer. I just want to also, uh, that was very impassioned by Jim. Thank you. Let's remember also uh, to maybe <clears throat> the, uh, the, the owner just keeps in here. Let's, let's try to volume down a little bit. Uh, but I appreciate the passion, Jim. That was that was awesome. And now Chris. Yeah, but it's worthwhile. The, the it's not a big on, tax. Uh, my colleague Jim Humay was talking about with this transfer tax. It's important that everyone, every voter, understands that this is a, 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 a decrease and increase in property transfer, which also includes refinancing. By the way, so who's going to be more most affected by the increase? Is the, any any property sold that's over a million dollars in sale in price, uh, they, they, a lot of a lot of the electioneering that's been going on, and I'll, I'll classify it as electioneering, is they they're claiming uh, they, the proponents are claiming 
that the that your 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 taxes are going to go down, but the rich the rich are going to pay more in tax. It's only at the point of sale when you transfer property or when you refinance. The other aspect of it is that there's a, there's a lot of bait and switch. There's it's been highly contentious all the way through because it it was basically stripped off the ballot, and then it got put back on there through the court system, primarily because they were they and I still believe in my humble opinion that they are performing what they call log rolling, which is putting three questions to, to ask the same, to get one answer, a yes or a no answer. So if you agree with one, you have to agree with all three for one. And plus a lot of them are conflicting with one another. You can't take from one and give to another on the same ballot initiative. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I think our next questioner was- Before, before we get to Mr. Zucker and then after Mr. Zucker, we'll go with Mr. Cohen. I, I wanna add, uh, you got two online waiting too, Justin. Sure, um, but I, I all you know. We talked about mansion tax. I was at a meeting with my alderman. I looked up homes in my zip code. Everything close to a million, or just slightly over a million dollars, was like a big, regular, nice house, or like a three flat, so or four flat. This is <clears throat> this is a dig at landlords. And it's a it's a it's it's an assault on you know socialists don't like landlords they just want to you know make it hard for them and this is one of the things that they do. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Zucker. So all I want to really do is answer Ellen's question. Why are there commandments? Answer because that's required by Illinois law. And just as they elect Democratic commandments, Republican commandments, and I believe at one point three party commandments. Well, is that your question? Yeah. Yes, and this is the first year for it. So, everybody that spoke tonight is a, is an an is the uh, inaugural class of the first ward. Many people in Chicago, and you are right. I failed to mention that it is required by law. Uh, why it's required by law is because it's just a weird party, you know, collusion with the state thing. That's Sit silly. I want to get the okay. I want to get an online. Uh, one for the time. We've already had a question. I think Tim. Uh, I want to go to Dan Weinberg real yeah. quick online, and then we'll go to our next person. Sure. Dan, you're up. Dan, you got your hand. I'm, on on this, I'm unmuted now. Yes. I have a question. Are you say as you might know there are thirty thousand migrants coming from. Mexico, Peru, Venezuela, they come here on buses. They're pretty poor people. And they have nothing. They have the clothes on their back, which might be a jacket and a backpack. How do you expect to pay for these people? Or do you want people freezing on the street, starving? Or maybe, I know what, rich people can take them into their big houses that they have and take one person and that'll be only 30,000 people, and there are 2 million people in Chicago. What's your question? Okay, your, my question is, do you want to pay for these migrants at all, or do you want just to complain about taxes, or do you care about people coming here? That's my I, question. I do care about people coming here, but they sh it, shouldn't have, it shouldn't be at the expense of us. We shouldn't be subsidizing people to come here. What about poor people and, and low, wait, wait, wait. What about poor people and working answer? people in America? They pay taxes. Do you want me to answer? Okay, answer. Tim, you have to enforce the rules, please. All right. Um, so uh, the question was, um, do I want, okay. So I would prefer that we do not subsidize them bring them here. Uh, unfortunately, that's what's happening. What we can do, I guess, a uh, quick fix, um, with, let's, let's let them work. Uh, let's uh, um, abolish the minimum wage so, there's, so we can open up the labor market even more so people can hire them. Uh, and, you know, a lot of these people are, I don't know how, you know, you see a lot of migrants selling candy they're certainly make them less than minimum wage, but for why? That's okay for them to sell candy, but they can't 
do whatever. So I, I, there's there's several things that we can do while you know now that they're here that we can help them get into the labor market. Is there any other things I'm missing, guys? Okay. I mean, if, Jim, if you want to take an answer, I know you probably got some strong opinions on this. All right, Jim, come on up. The uh, the micro the micro crisis we are facing currently here in the city of Chicago, Cook County, and uh, frankly across the country is a perfect example of the failure of government at every single level. From the deep state of this country undermining the economies of Latin American and Central American countries, creating poverty, forcing their citizens to flee, to a completely unsecure border with no, with no controlled checkpoints, to governors of states treating people like cattle and shipping them all across the country, to local government here in Chicago and Cook County declaring themselves a uh, sanctuary status and then not having a plan in place. If you can look at what's going on now and say government has helped at all, you're not paying attention. The other ones here, you want to comment on that? Yeah. I just want to uh, recite the National Libertarian Party's platform on migration. Free trade and migration. We support the removal of governmental impediments to free trade, political freedom, and escape from tyranny that demand that individuals not be unreasonably constrained by government in the crossing of political boundaries. Economic freedom demands the unrestricted movement of human as well as financial capital across national borders. And my personal uh, opinion on the borders is that they are imaginary lines drawn on a map by criminal gangs with guns and flags. Nico wants uh, to mention something. All right, Nico, come on up. Some Nico. of you guys know the owner of this place, do you? Yes. What's his name? I don't know, but I do know I've talked to him before. Steve. Okay, Steve, like a few million of other Greeks, they came here with no subsidies. People used to come in this country with no subsidies whatsoever. They came here because they wanted to come here and work. That's the way to be. That's the American way. You come here because you want to work. You don't come here because you want to be given subsidies. The government, like Jim said, this is the government's creation, this disaster. These people want to come anyway. Why do we need to subsidize them? And then not only do we subsidize them, but we don't let them work, which is the worst. These people came here to work. And we don't let them work. The government doesn't let them work. Because I want to employ them. Steve wants to employ them. They want to work. But we have an intermediary, which is the government, that doesn't let them work. It's the most absurd, un-American thing that has ever happened in this country. Thank you. All right, Justin, who else? Um, our, next we question. our next question. But before we do, I would also just like to just to say the hypocrisy of the city of Chicago to put a tax hike on the ballot but not sanctuary city status is the hypocrisy there is insane. But yes, I, I believe I believe Sid Cohen had a question. Okay, Sid, are you up? Or if he's if he's busy, then we can if if not, we can come back to Sid. Looks like you. So the question is, how do we know how much the teachers make or not? 
$93,000. Median is 93000 And I guess I, I guess he's asking, I guess this question is to ask for a citation. In the city of all right, who's got a anybody else who's a libertarian <laughs> want to comment on that? I, I think we answered it though. Okay, Charlie, you got a second question? Go ahead. Yeah, if I own a big law firm downtown, can I make a campaign contribution of a million dollars to the Libertarian Party candidate for state's attorney? And will the party thank, write me a note thanking me? Do you accept corporate donations? Does the Cape Cook County state's attorney candidate accept corporate donations? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Well, your candidate. Um, I don't think Andrew. Kip Andrew Kipinski. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not sure. I haven't actually asked Andrew. Do you accept campaign contributions from corporations? Charlie, you'll be happy to know that the massive donors have all gone into the Democratic primary, and that no huge donors have lined up behind Andrew Kipinski. But if there was one, he, you would take the money. You could ask Mr. Kapinski that. I'm sure he would. Yes or no. The help, but you know, since you're so angelic that you're above this, I'm sure no one you're voting for for state's attorney is accepting one red cent from anyone wealthy. Is that correct, Mr. Paynor? So I can buy your candidates, it seems. Well, yours are fucking already bought, dude. No All right, Chris Cruz, Christian from Texas, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Um, Loud, Chris. All right, thank you. The um, uh, Here in Texas, um, my, quest, my question is, what is the libertarian position on the Texas Governor Abbott sending people from the border to Chicago and Illinois. Um, as I think some of us have already touched, probably not a big fan of that. I, uh, as, as we mentioned, this is a failure of government. They're sending it here. They're sending them here because Chicago has been very, you know, send them here. And they basically are calling the bluff. And now it's a, now it's an issue for us, and there's not enough jobs and not enough housing to absorb these uh, migrants. So me personally, uh, I would rather they not be sent here. Uh, I think they might be fine uh, in Texas or whatever point of entry. Maybe they can go somewhere they want to go, but. Uh, I, I do not support our government welcoming them, welcoming them in here with the amounts of money that they're spending and with no plan to do that. Does anybody else want to come? Thank you, Justin. Uh, just to kind of reiterate, uh, and it kind of encapsulates everything. Uh, to your question, sir, uh, how do we feel uh, as a libertarian here in Illinois about uh, the Governor Abbott's actions? Point blank, I, I can't agree with uh, Governor Abbott and his actions. In my humble opinion, and I think that's shared with a lot of my, my friends and uh, party members here, is uh, the most humane thing we can do for these people is to send them back because the weather is harsh here and they just don't have the economic access that the rest of us have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay. for letting us know. I'll take the next question. All right, who's the next questioner? All right. I'm a... Chicago has undergone massive migrations in the past. The Great Migration, the migration of 1888 or, or 1890s. We had organizations like Adam, Jane Adams, Hull House. We've had other, you know, the Great Migration of the Blacks up here, where I know we had the Covenant Race Codes, but they were able to, to integrate. What's the difference between then and now? So, so your question to the, the to, the to the Libertarian Party, the libertarian. what's the difference between the, the great migrations from the past and what's going on today? Yes. 
Yeah, I, I think that uh, first, first and foremost, and I, I, any of my friends can jump in here and, and give their two cents. I think uh, part of the problem is is that uh, we have so much government that's putting so much putting so much regulation on everyday living to where it makes the migration more painful for all people involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like you know, like as one of my one of my friends said that uh, they have a problem with uh, you know that the socialists have a problem with landlords because they're greedy landlords as, as in their view, whereas most of uh, the landlords that I personally know don't make much of a profit yeah. off of their property, primarily because the government regulations, they have to provide so many things that come out of their bottom line so that their profits are very, very slim, if at all. I got a question. Anybody, Any other, uh, want to comment Anybody else want to comment? Yeah, come on up. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome back, my friend, Jim Humane. Uh, the big difference between uh, some of those earlier uh, migrations and what we are seeing now is there was the need. There was there was a there was a there was a there was a, a deep need for for jobs, right? And, and so there was my, uh, so uh, my, uh, migration of uh, from the south to the north, migration from Europe to to uh, to the United States. There was a there was there was a demand for jobs, and people could come here and work. Uh, my my family, you know, came here from uh, Eastern Europe and Southern Europe at the turn of the century. Uh, there were no subsidies. There was no housing uh, assistance. There were no. Uh, there were no cell phones handed out at the border. They came here because there was a there was a need for jobs. And the, and you know what? If we need to, if, if there's going to be any government at all, it needs to be creating jobs. It needs to be providing an environment where jobs can be created without the regulation. These people come here, and they have to get a permit in order to work. That didn't happen in those other migrations. Okay. Charlie, uh, uh, Charlie you've got another question. Mo, well, before we go to Charlie Hill, okay, Mike, you've got a question. Go ahead. I don't know why the Republicans and the right wing and the libertarians are so anti immigrant. They, these people that come from Venezuela, Mexico, are some of the best fucking contractors, yeah. craftsmen what in doing? the world. I, I, in the world, we should be. I don't think any labor I, shortage. If you just pay attention to the big group. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, need to, so we got your question. Thank you. I, 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 we're, not anti, we're, we're not anti immigrant. We're anti government interference with, with immigration. That's where the problem comes. Like I said, they, they, oh. they, are, they are some of the great, they, they're here, they want to work. They can't work because the government tells them they can't work. You know why they can't work? They need a work permit. You know why? Because the government needs to take money out of what you earn in order, in order for you to work. How's this? How, how is that even possible? I, I needed a permit when I had my... Uh, hey, Barry, you got your, your question. What's cool? All right, go ahead. We're done. I already recited the Libertarian Party platform. The Libertarian Party is in favor of open borders. That is pro-immigrant, not anti-immigrant. If you want, I can recite it again. No, that's okay. Anybody else? Uh, I want to... I, I am not anti-immigrant. I would... I'm pro-immigrant. I think Venezuelan women are very attractive. They should come. And I, I, I'm going to disagree, though, with sending them back. I think they're here. Let's, let's, if they're here, let, let, you know, I don't agree with the means and methods to how in which they came. But if they're here, I think we should let them stay. And, uh, but certainly let's get, you know, let's make this process as easy as possible. Anybody else want to? Yeah, we oh yeah, we got we got immigrant, you know, libertarians in the room. Okay. Um. Um. Our convention, our state convention, was last week, and we actually had a discussion on on uh, open borders. There was a speaker that came to talk about open borders. So we are definitely pro immigrant. Okay. Um. All right, Justin, we're going to have Charlie go again. Charlie, one more question. Go ahead. All right, let me get on the screen here. All right, well, well all right. Uh, all right. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, let me go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Will you be quiet? 
All right. Uh, I heard the candidates say several times that the government has failed at every level. Government is, is a total failure. All these forms of government are, are a failure. Can you tell me what area of free market capitalism is 100% successful? Free market capitalism works with banks, banks in trouble, stock market is in trouble, companies closing every day of the week. No company, no company lasts more than five years. Small businesses close all Please, the sir, time. I didn't hear your question. Are you telling me that free market capitalism works? Yes, it, it works. It does work because it's the best way of allocating resources and, and using them wisely. And you do That's it in wise. a decentralized way that requires no anybody making decisions. You know, central planning certainly, you know, people don't know how to calculate shit. So in the Soviet Union, as, as, as uh, you are very... Um, adamant about replicating here in the United States, uh, they ended up having shortages and famines and all sorts of stuff because their central planners were too stupid to figure it out. So what capitalism does, it allows people to own the property to trade with it, uh, it allows people to buy labor and agree to mutually uh, beneficial exchanges. Um, and How does it work? The most it's the most, it's the least coercive system. It allows for the greatest abundance. Where does it work? Government agencies don't, government agencies live in a purely capitalistic hell. country. Uh, you like, uh, Charlie, as you guys may know, likes to say, oh, we live in free market capitalism out of one side of his mouth. The other side of the mouth, his mouth is, Socialism is awesome because we got social security and roads in the military. We pay for so, um, so uh, one foot at a time, sir. Uh, so, I, I, uh, that's my thoughts on capitalism. Follow-up question: Government agencies have been one hundred percent successful. I doubt it, but you know what? Let's find out. We don't have. We're not, we're not living in a free market system. Oh, it's come a on. System, a, a, a cronyism system where government and corporations are alive together to pass laws and regulations that benefit each other. Not that benefit us. Not that benefit us. So to say, you know, I would, let's find out. We know that communism is a massive failure. We have, we have, uh, we have 60, 70 years of proof of that. We, know, we, we look around the world and we see places like Venezuela that have socialist governments, massive failure. So we already know that those systems don't work. Works in Europe. Europe European countries are, are, are more capitalist than they are socialist. Capitalism is you know, a mess. In, 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 in most European countries, the corporate tax rate is about 60% lower than it is in the United States. Yeah, but they like it. I like lower taxes too. Let's do that here. Anybody, other, anybody, any other All right. Capitalism? How about we go to uh, you had a you had a question, uh, Andy. Andy Anderson. All okay, right. Andy, loud, please. How's it going, Andy? So, what's going to happen on November 5th? Election day. We got a dictator for life. Criminals masquerading as Republicans are putting in place in various places. They're replacing the people that didn't go along with the electoral scam last time. Mike Pence was the only one that stood between us and Trump and the criminal state control. Well, the, the last, the, the last okay, election, I think I got the, your hint of your question. Hold on. Don't get abusive. <laughs> Let me finish. Yeah. The question is, <laughs> is the Libertarian Party going to stand by while a trial runs? The last election is best for this time in the democracy in America. And everything the Libertarians are standing for, that's all going down the shitter on November Okay, I, I think I heard the question mark there. So, where does the Libertarian Party stand? <laughs> I haven't heard anything tonight about that. Okay, all right, let's see it. One, that's a top issue. 
Okay. So I, I believe that elections should be free of, uh, of, of fraud. And I don't think there should be any sort of seizure of power uh, by one party or another. I, I do think that January 6th was a failed seizure. I mean, it was it, they had no chance, but they, it, they people, I think Trump incited that, and I, I don't like, I was not a fan of it. Um, if, if I would certainly be opposed to any sort of maneuver like that repeating in 2026, or excuse me, 2024. Uh, and um, I certainly, uh, and as a matter of principle, oppose coup d'etats, seizures of power, that sort of thing. All right, go ahead. I'm going to jump in. I'm yeah. going to add, add a little footnote to that. Uh, it, uh, and, and I don't mean any, any disrespect or harm when I say this. I think it's very rich to, to sit there and ask the Libertarian Party, who has time and time and time again been denied ballot access and outside of the democratic process, how they feel about the democratic process being taken over. No offense to you. I, I, I mean, I, but it's something we're, we've grown up with, essentially. You know, so we, we, we're familiar. We're just as angry as you are. We want to we wanna have a seat at that table as well. And part of getting that seat is getting your acknowledgement when it comes to elections. What should you get rid of? Uh, that's one. Here you ask the question. Sorry, I got, I'm sorry. All right. What's the answer? Go ahead, Tom. We got nobody else. What taxes do we want to get rid of? Yes. All of them. Okay. What are we going to get rid of? Uh, anybody, any other libertarians want to ask about it? All income taxes? Yes. All gasoline taxes? Yes. So let the roads go to hell? Have you been driven on the road? Okay, hey, get rid of the gas taxes. Who does the roads right now? Who builds the roads right now? Who builds them? Who builds, who builds the roads right now? Private companies. Uh, 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 private unions. Com unions. Private companies build the roads right now. Union with, with unions, sure. Private companies build the roads. And who pays those private companies to build the roads? The government. The government is a middleman. So who would build the roads without government? The same people building them now. You're just talking about... Yeah, they're going to just ride roads. Of course they are. You know, you know who else? You know who else will build the roads? If I'm Amazon, I need good roads. If I'm a trucking company, I need good roads. You know, the, the original idea for the highway system was developed by Henry Ford. He wanted the automotive companies to build the roads because better roads mean more people buying cars. It was never the job of government to build roads. It can be done with private industry. It can be done uh, by these the companies that rely on roads to fund them. All right, go ahead. If we didn't have taxes, your house would be over here, and McDonald's would be over here, and you'd be scratching your head trying to decide how you're going to get to the other side. Because roads are such a complex idea that that only government could, could, could do it. All right. Uh, past Libertarian Party uh, conventions uh, have passed motions affirming uh, that taxation is theft. So... Uh, taxation is theft, and people will build the roads. Uh, Domino's uh, had a really fun promotion where they would fix potholes and then put the little Domino's logo spray painted on the potholes. So there's there's, there's uh, the roof and less sprawl and less reliance on automobiles if we did not pay for roads, if we minimized taxation to pay for roads. Because, I mean, the only reason why you can, uh, you know, people can drive 120 miles round trip every day is because the government is very generous in providing them highways and roads. How many questions is the, how many tech questions do you have? Okay. I, 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 you know, Mike, 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 I think it's time we now go to rebuttals. It's time we go to rebuttals, Mike. Mike, if you want to do your rebuttals. All right, now. Yeah, Tim's going to lay down the law. Yeah, Tim's going to lay down the law. We're going to have rebuttals now.
Let's take our speech first. Is that each of you are going to get a certain amount appointed time to speak. I'll let Justin strike the last word tonight because of what's going on. I'll leave, yeah, allocate everybody three to four minutes each, and I'm going to take the first rebuttal myself. Put a time actual limit on it. Four minutes. Four minutes, okay. And then uh, you can time me, Justin. All right. I am generally a free market capitalist. I've also known, too, how corporations are probably one of the biggest drawers of government welfare. Oh, yeah. And the special protections they give to them. I am also aware that people do the same thing. However, about the argument for taxation, one of the fundamental responsibilities that governments do was open up things like canals and waterways and, yes, roads. Almost every other country in the world, we have a privatized railroad system here in the United States. But it was built with government subsidy, for example, on the uh, Transcontinental Railroad. They gave them land and uh, exclusive lease access. The thing is, is that there are certain things that government needs to do. And a lot of times, um, things like health care, things like, um, you know, I mean, I understand that it wasn't like that a hundred years ago, but let's face facts. You know, when I, we look at our healthcare system now, it's one of the most expensive in the world. And with it being privatized because they have all the, um, all the special favors that they're giving to the drug companies and other people like this, we still have some of the highest prices in the world. Yet when you go to other countries, such as Britain with their national health system, such as Switzerland, like their privatized health insurance system, but they can't use their profits to enrich the executives that go back in. You look at Scandinavia right now, that was at one time one of the largest socialist countries in the world, but they reformed their system. They took it on to the fact that a lot of their, a lot of their contracts are provided by uh, private organizations. A lot of their contracts are provided by, uh, you know, companies doing bids. And then they follow them through and act on them. Now, the problem with, you see, you don't want, it's, it's just a mix. I mean, on, one, on the one hand, you've got a lot of social benefits in Europe, but you also have a higher rate of taxation. You know, if you're not going to have taxation, you're going to be paying for this stuff yourself. And in a lot of cases, some people won't, some people will. But even schools are the second most uh, public good that the government's been financing for years and years. Yeah. Uh, public education has been um, around since at least the 1700s in some countries. And uh, for not to have taxes to educate your kids, you'll have a, you'll have a illiterate population. There are things we do in commons. And as a matter of fact, when you look at Adam Smith's book, The Wealth of Nations, he mentions something in there called the commons, which means common property or areas that are taken in as a communal responsibility. He did not advocate the use of no taxes. Plus, like it or not, we need an army and we need a navy and we yeah. need and we yeah, need to keep things, things in here. That. And the thing is, is like even right now. You know, even the internet, believe it or not, that you guys think it's so freewheeling, there's a big governing body behind that too. It's called the Internet Corp Assigned Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. And even in your consumer electronics, they have tons of standards, tons of things like this. Traffic laws are uniform throughout the area. The thing is, there's a lot that government does that we don't know. Ambulance, fire, police. Exactly. Ambulance, time. fire, police. And the thing is, I'm not saying that, you know, um, that capitalism is bad. As a matter of fact, I support it. Free markets do work. Free markets That's are sense. some of the best ways. You look at the consumer electronics industry, which has basically been free market and open, um, you'd be doing the same thing. Even with this whole thing of climate change, where, you know, because we're listening to a whole bunch of loonies with these uh, government subsidy stuff, they have literally... Uh, taken away the innovation given in uh, the nuclear power industry. Now, granted, time. nuclear power needs it. Okay, my time is up. Uh, I'll, you're, pick up you're, you, I'll, I'll pick up where you are. <coughs>
<coughs> Excuse me there, please. All right, Mike, you got four minutes. All right. I'll pick up where Tim left off. So my question was not answered properly at all. I was like, okay, you guys are all about free market and laissez-faire. Which taxes are we going to cut? Are we going to cut the corporation taxes to zero so Jeff Bezos keeps every penny? Are we going to cut the income taxes people pay? Are we going to cut the restaurant taxes, the gasoline taxes? Yes. Half of our taxes go to wars and bombs and killing other people in other countries. That's why we want to cut it. And, um, you know, so, and Social Security is not a tax. I don't think it's labeled a tax. It's paid for, and so is Medicare and Medicaid is paid for by us people paying into the funds. So anyway, but you know, and then schools, ambulance, half the half the costs of um, uh, half the dispatches by ambulance, police, and fire are to uh, traffic act, traffic crashes. <laughs> That's a huge expense. All these lights for the roads. Do you know how the electric bill? Abolish roads? So, you know, so tell me, you guys, you experts, what are we, what taxes are we going to cut? And what services are we going to get rid of? Or my buddy Russ is going to have to stay in Huntley and be on Zoom for the rest of his life? You know, are we just going to be not going anywhere and just have Uber Eats delivering every product we need? Yeah. And we'll just stay in bed like the kids nowadays, yeah. you know, sit on the stupid phones, <laughs> just be losers. Yeah. TikTok, you know, the Chinese pollute the youth, yeah. and all the garbage they put out. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, let me clarify that. Tell me which taxes we're cutting all the way to zero. And which services that the governments, you know, and the other thing, you guys should have taught, you know, Andy and I were trying to get edu educated here. And there's committee men, there's aldermen, there's different levels. You guys are bitching about levels of government. And there's all these different structures. And a nice little chart would have been nice saying, okay, here's the new mayor, Johnson, or whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> and... He, he, uh, this is the top of the heap, and then there's the Cook County, I think Breckwinkle, who I met once. Yeah, I think she's on the top of one heap, he's on the other. And then there's all these other, I know my alderman's name now, committed it to memory, Angela oh, Clay. Huh? Wow. Well, well full of time, guys. you know, I do call my alderman and complain. And guess who you don't want to complain? You're, you're complaining. I get speed bumps put in. Yeah. <laughs> I got one on my block. Yo, know, yeah. Do we no more speed bumps? Go 90 no. miles per hour down side streets? No. Yo, what? You do not want speed bumps. <laughs> you guys, what's with uh, Yeah, really. You guys are awful. This libertarian <laughs> girl. Anyway, uh, Charlie, how are you doing? Hey. All right. All right, Charlie. Take it over, whoever wants to go. But, okay, yeah, so tell me the structures you guys are talking about, committee men, and all the different, how that works, the pie chart, the uh, not the pie chart, but the charts, so I understand right, things better. Up. And then tell me where you're cutting taxes and cutting services. Russ wants roads, but he doesn't want to pay for them. All right. <laughs> no, remember, I've always called for toll roads. Toll roads on every block. Yeah, uh, I think tolls are a form of user fee. Yeah. All right, you got four minutes, uh, Russ. Uh oh. There was a plan to put, uh, 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 let these illegals work. And also, Tyson just announced they're closing a big plant all part of firing Americans and replacing them with illegals. And also, they need all these illegals. Remember, what they really are is future Democrats. Yeah. Go ahead, Charlie. All right, can I? Can you hear me? Yes. All right. I would like to thank the Libertarian Party again for engaging in good civic engagement, uh, putting forth worth for what their positions. They seem to uh, 
want to advance. There seems to be some disagreement about some of the policies, but that's inherent to politics. Nevertheless, you do a good job of fighting uh, ballot access and getting uh, candidates on, uh, recruiting candidates and getting them on the ballot, and most importantly, getting it off the vote. I can compliment you in that regard. I'll talk about several subjects here. Number one, I was involved in the real estate transfer tax. I've been involved in public transit for many years. And in 2008, it is not a brand new tax. As I've heard here tonight, that's a total misconception. It's been around since 2008 and was applied to fund public transit. The current suggestion is, is that it in fact will be lowered and that the it be that the rich people who own high value property will pay more. It's merely adjustment that helps the middle and lower classes. So I don't understand the opposition to it. You're so opposed to taxes that you are opposed to a lessening of the tax is the only thing I can figure out. The other thing is I'm given some crazy conspiracy theory. I should vote on the basis of a conspiracy theory. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and thirdly, regarding the immigrants, I fail to see anywhere that the free market capitalism is stepping up and doing anything to alleviate the suffering of the situation, to mediate suffering of the people here. They're doing absolutely nothing. And if that's what you, they could, the free market could care less. The government, in fact, is trying to help these people, like, like that guy said. Nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. And last of all, I heard again that the libertarians are opposed to minimum wage. Well, most of the people in fast food, for example, are not kids. They're adults. And that's their job. That's how they make their life. You want to cut their pay? Take money from McDonald's Corporation and let candidates who get rid of the, the uh, uh, minimum wage. Why would you want to do that? I don't understand that at all. Why would you want to reduce minimum wage for poor people? It's their only source of income. Uh, did you guys ever discuss these issues? And that's the all. Capitalism doesn't work. No companies exist for more than a few years. They go belly up. Or else, uh, the other version of capitalism is the sweatshop. Is that you telling me that's success? Oh boy, good places of employment, the sweatshop. That's what you get when you have no government. Time. You go to another country where there's no government, and what do they do? The free market capitalism opens up a sweatshop. It's hard to convince me that government is fails at every level. The government has pr protected us from not allowing them to open sweatshops. Time. Time. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Good luck in the election. All right. Who's next? All right. Four minutes. All right. We had the weird feedback earlier. I'll try not to get too close. So let's see in which particular order. If Mike would pay attention, um, land value taxation, similar to the proposals of Henry George, might be the best one to keep <laughs> or to get rid of all the others and only use land value taxation. Not Fritz Kagi's property tax system, but a shift to a kind of Henry George style. And if that's something you have to look up, use the internet. I know that many Georgists have graced the presence of the College of Complexes over the last 73 years. Um, let's see. Several of the other uh, subjects we addressed already, I think, like about, and I'll try and combine the two of these I, I, just to restate them from earlier. What can capitalism do for the migrants? It's the and it's, you know, what is government not doing for them? The permission to work, it might not be glamorous. I mean, it might be similar to 
bussing tables at a place like this, but that entry level job that gets you out of a sleeping bag in an abandoned factory or a cot in the lobby of a police station and, you know, into an apartment with other people doing entry level work to try and make it in life. And a lot of that is done under the table, regardless of what the minimum current wage laws are, Charlie. So I know you're a childless man, but it's sort of like if the child has already been born, arguing about birth control doesn't matter anymore. Damn this microphone. Now, uh, there? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I shouldn't be using as much profanity. So I don't know how much time we have left, about two minutes. Two and a half. Two and a half. All right. Mike, it's my turn. Uh, so much of what has been performed by government in this area has been done badly. I agreed with Jim's statement, and we put out a similar press release that Jim had put together some months ago. Uh, about that failure. I'm also amazed that the busing of and flying of migrants to Chicago has received more federal subsidy than the housing and feeding of them once they're here. So whether that's Governor Abbott's scheme and Governor DeSantis and some of the other cohort, or whether that's the nonprofit, you know, industry kind of, of Catholic charities and other groups like that. Um, I wouldn't call that free market if they're waiting for federal reimbursement. I don't think you know what those words mean. Um, to, to, put, to put it bluntly, why do we have ward committee persons? You live in a ward. The city has 50 of them. If you lived in one of the other counties in Illinois, they elect everyone at the precinct level. We have ward committee and township committee people for these partisan positions in Cook County because we have 40% of the state's population. So they don't elect precinct committeemen in Cook County, but in the suburban townships, and that, that's in the alternating cycles with the city. So we do it in the presidential years, and the suburban townships do it in the midterm election years. Um, that's just sort of Illinois Civics 101. And uh, someone is talking about what you could do with the corruption in the state. I mean, hey. They couldn't even hear Ed Burke's case about whether or not to take away his law license because four out of seven Illinois Supreme Court justice had to recuse themselves because of their associations with Ed Burke. Um, and before we lose time here, ah, um, one other thing about this tax, uh, transfer tax proposal. Yes, it cuts the rate for people on one end, but it's going to be, it's going to make them pay for it on the other when they don't collect enough money from the high end properties. If there's a lot of vacancies in the high rises downtown, which is sort of the fantasy is the love hate relationship with downtown where people want to use downtown tax revenue as a credit card for other things, but then don't, if downtown isn't prospering a great deal, then that magic trick doesn't work. And if a lot of those buildings are vacant and trailing off. Also, Mike, look at a W-2, Social Security tax, Medicare tax, says so on your W-2. Okay, who's next? Get some of you other libertarians up there to get Well, hey, okay, we got a final, we got a final rebuttal yeah, at the end, guys. Yeah, but, but the thing is, uh, you got five people. You're getting All right, the final well, one. does, uh, does Mr. Zucker want to go or anybody online? Uh, yeah, one of the other. Uh, if there's no way else, then we can just go into rebuttals. Go, go, go ahead and keep, guys, keep your going. You got four minutes each. We got some time yet here, so. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, as far uh, just to address the question that uh, apparently wasn't wasn't answered about what taxes would be cut, and, and that would certainly be be all of them. Adam did address uh, a point that that I've made in my in my county board campaign that. Uh, land value taxes would be probably in the in the short term uh, the way to finance government while we can wind it down. Land value taxes assess the value of the land, not the buildings. And what this does is it allows people to, to make improvements upon their property without suffering additional taxes. I, I tell this message to the people who live in Austin and the and the neighborhoods where they can't where, where their property taxes are are going up 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 and they can't afford to to uh, maintain their properties. That's ridiculous. 
that so that needs to be solved. Um, and, and land value taxes would be a bridge to do that. Now, land value taxes are actually a progressive idea. This is not a libertarian idea. In fact, a lot of libertarians would, 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 would tell me I'm not a libertarian for even talking about it. But uh, uh, the city of Detroit is, is implementing a, a, a version now uh, of, a, of a hybrid property land value tax to help reduce uh, uh, the, uh, the property taxes in the city of Detroit and help regrow the, 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 the vacant lots the abandoned buildings that were caused by excessive taxation, and that, that and they've come to the realization that something has to change if they're going to improve those ideas. Um, any other questions? Like I, I, I can't really think of right now, but I just want to make sure I, I address that tax one point. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, who's, who, uh, who's the next libertarian that wants to uh, give a rebuttal? Uh, I'll let him in. Do you want to go? Uh, Chris, do you want to go? Nico, do you want to go? Sure, sure, go ahead. I want to talk about something that's unrelated to what we've talked up to now, but it's very related to the upcoming election. Fred Skegney is trying to assault every property owner in Cook County. He hates the Board of Review, which is where we go to appeal our taxes. Two years ago, he managed to change one of the three board members and put one of his cronies. So now the board of review is 2-1 against Kegi. He wants to make it like in the Soviet Union, where there is no secondary appeal for property owners. He wants to make the board of review, he wants to man them with people that agree with him. I personally thought he was gonna wait until 2026, but no. He decided to go after Larry Rogers, which is being uh, elected for the last 20 years in the southern district of the state, of the county. There are three districts. That's why there are three members. And he found a part-time administrative clerk at the each township assessor's office that nobody knows of or ever heard that has no experience until she was uh, employed recently at that office. He gave, he gave her $100,000 to run a campaign against Larry Rogers. Whoever decides to vote Democratic in the 46 remaining wards, that there is no libertarian candidate, whoever decides to vote Democratic, do not vote for this fake crony a person that Fritz Kegi has as a candidate, vote for Larry Rogers, so at least the Board of Review remains independent from Fritz Kegi for the next two years. Thank you. All right. All right, Dan, you wanna? I guess I'll give my rebuttal to the final speech. Um, so today is my eight year anniversary as a flight attendant. That is what I do outside of all my uh, my Libertarian Party uh, things. Um, part of being a flight attendant is I have the freedom to purchase my electronic cigarettes in any state I wish to because I'd be insane to purchase them here in Chicago. I was in Saginaw, Michigan the other day. Um, the last time I was there, I had purchased these. They're called Blue, and they just have a vanilla flavored e cigarette. Um, you'll see where I'm getting with this in a minute. But that I was excited. I was like, I'm going to get my, my vanilla flavored e cigarettes. Went to go to the gas station by my hotel to find out that, oh, well, they're banned now. That's part of the reason to be a libertarian. We're sick of the government banning shit. Oh, I like, like electronic cigarettes, it makes no sense to ban them. Yeah. Like that's you know they they, they use that excuse that well it's going to keep kids from smoking. Actually, now kids are going to only have the option of cigarettes if they don't have the option of electronic cigarettes. Um, 
but it's silly. The government should have no business in banning e-cigarettes. So, um, also, I think we should legalize, we should legalize crack. If somebody wants to yell at people outside the 7-Eleven to dance, go for it. I don't think they should be harassed by the cops, but yeah. Um, vote libertarian because we believe in freedom, whether you want to do e-cigarettes, crack, marijuana, whatever it is. The government should have no business telling us what to do. So yeah, vote libertarian. All right. Go ahead. Just to kind of reiterate uh, what uh, Danny was just saying there. Uh, it's, uh, I can't remember who actually said the quote, but uh, the quote goes something like this. Every, every person should, get, should be able to go to hell and by their own means, is what I think he's trying to get to. So where it's like, hey, whatever your vice is, you can go, go for it until it takes you to the grave. So question was floated as far as to what taxes we would eliminate as libertarians. Yeah. You're going to get, you know, there's eight of us here or you know, five, six of us here. You're going to get different answers from each person in here. Okay, my opinion, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of my, my friends and colleagues here, is like, okay, well, you, you show me a tax that you think is so darn effective, and I'll point out all the evils that's rooted into that tax, and I'll convince you that we need to eliminate that tax. Yes, yes. For, for, okay. One bullet time. One, hold on, hold on. I'll give you an example. Okay, 55% of my property taxes pay for public schools. I'm not saying public school is bad. But I don't have any children. I get absolutely zero benefit out of fifty-five percent of my property tax. Oh, One fool, bro. Go ahead, finish. Okay, yeah. So, okay, you don't use roads. You're a bicyclist. Is that what you're saying? Because you do use the roads, then. A little bit. Yeah. Well, oh, 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 okay. Like so, 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 so that would that would have me understand that you agree to a toll system for per use. You know how many hundreds of billions of dollars in bikes? You, you know why they cost so much? Do you know why they cost so much? I'll, I'll, we'll keep this in open dialogue. Yeah, and I'll, I'll not a crappy driver. Three hundred million. No, let, let me help you. Let me help you out. First of all, whenever you get the government involved in purchasing things, it automatically costs three times as much as what it actually values. Because they have to sit there and take their cream off the top, and then they have to hire two of their buddies to do the work. That's how it works out. All right. That being said, I do wish that everybody would go out there and support the, the democratic process and consider a libertarian on, on any ballot that you're participating in. If you'd like to learn more about libertarianism, you're here in Chicago. We do have LP Chicago uh, website, which I'm sure uh, Justin's going to give as soon as he gets his rebuttal up here. Uh, we have a national party. And as a matter of fact, there's plenty of us here in the room. You can reach out to us directly, one by one, after we're out of here today. Thank you, Tim. All right. Who else is next? All right. Final remarks by Justin. Justin, you got All right. probably about uh, Charlie, it sounds like you're very uh, – actually, let me, let, me, let me put my timer here. Well, we got some time, Justin. Since you well, I, I, I want every, you know, four minutes. I'll do four minutes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, I, Charlie, I want you to get well soon. It sounds like you're very sick. Uh, I would consider giving up smoking. Um, and I fully endorse you. If, if there was a democratic sort of ousting of you, I would support keeping you as the program director. Um, so thank you, Charlie and Tim. <laughs> for all you do at the college and keeping this tradition alive. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Bulger. Um, um, one thing I want Charlie to address in his, uh, in his tenure as the program director here is there's a free rider problem. Sorry guys, you guys zooming in, you're not kicking it. Everybody else had to pay tuition to-, to Oh, we uh, waived them tonight, Justin. Uh, well, regardless, there's still an issue. And I don't know if there's been any uh, talk of secession. Um, what it, is this about? Talk this, about is my, uh, this is my rebuttal, sir. Uh, no, no. You don't run the college from the podium. I'm not trying to, if you're listening to what I'm saying. You talk about your political party. Charlie, uh, Charlie I'm, I'm endorsing you, buddy. I, I don't know if you've heard what I'm saying. Yeah, but we don't need to. You don't run the college from the podium. 
I'm not. I'm just, I get to talk whatever I want during my rebuttal. Talk about the libertarian. And I'm talking highly of you, and I'm thanking you for, for giving me the platform. And talk about the and, and I hope that, I hope that when the child, here's what I'm trying to say, Charlie, if you let me finish and you quit interrupting. Oh, me. I would, before, before you talk about the libertarian, you went on this issue of paying. I don't know why. Yeah, Are you nuts yeah, or what? Yeah. Well, what we're doing, Justin, yeah. Justin. Let's, What's let's, your problem, Justin? Charlie, uh, if you're listening to what I'm saying, I don't we've have heard you. Clue. We've heard you three, five dozen times. Uh, are you gonna, Tim? You're gonna mute him. Okay, Charlie, can you please let him finish? He writes me emails about this. We know all about his issue. He won't let go. Now this is an evening we advertise. Charlie, uh, mute him. Mute him. Charlie, I'm going No, to... you have to enforce the rules. The one thing about the college is you have to enforce the rules. He's muted. Go ahead, finish. Okay, so what, if Charlie would shut up and listen to what I have to say, I hope that the college doesn't die with Charlie and Tim. And that's what I was trying to say if he was going to let me finish. And I was just... You know, a lot of us are, you know, uh, thinking about the future, and we certainly want to keep this tradition alive. And that's where I was going, with all the respect, Charlie. Um, one full at a time. Uh, I also want to thank Charlie for his kind words at the beginning of his rebuttal. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm sure Charlie, when he first met, was like, "Who's this punk?" And now I brought. Half a dozen of my comrades here yeah, can talk, and one and one uh, thing is uh, I think pretty awesome. So thank you, Charlie, for your kind words. One one other uh, one other um, event that I forgot to advertise at the beginning is we're gonna go sing karaoke at Cafe Mustache after here. I'm gonna try to sing some Jim Steinman tunes. Um, so if you guys want to join us at Cafe Mustache in the city of Chicago, that's Milwaukee and uh, California, join us. I also want to thank Andy, who's in the other room, with Sid, Chris, Nico, Tim, anybody else that may, maybe, uh, if I don't know, I apologize, and please correct me. Thank you guys for serving in the military. Uh, this gentleman had mentioned the military. I think military is one of the... Uh, uh, I think it's a function of the government. I don't think that doesn't mean we have to have an offensive sort of foreign policy. I think it should be a defense. I think collective defense can be philosophically justified. Um, I don't know if I'll do that now, but to answer your question, I think military is, collective defense is something that should exist. Um, so if you live in the first word, if you live in the 36th word, if you live in the 9th, 30th, 5th, and 30, 38th words, please pull a libertarian uh, ballot. Vote for us as ward committee person. Vote no on Bring Chicago Home. Um, thanks again to college. Also, road, uh, road tolls. I'm okay with tolls. I'm okay with user fees. That's one way that we can fund the government without taxing and it's completely voluntary. Uh, and I think we can do that if you want to pay a subscription, a premium military subscription fee to uh, fund the military. I think that that should be an option as well. Um, thanks again to college. I love free speech. I wish Ellen Corley would have popped in on here. But lp.org, lpillinois.org, lpchicago.org, vote for libertarians. Thank you. All right, adjourn us, Justin. They were out. Ding, ding, ding. So, were you in the military? No. No. Okay. And the college Are, stands. Were you in the military? Yes, I was. I know you were, Tim. I'm talking. All about right. You. The college stands adjourned. What's... The college now stands adjourned. I wish everybody a good week. I'd like to say thank everybody for coming again. So, with that, with that, we're adjourned and good night. Um, you know, the thing is, is, uh,